Now, every third, uh, well, it's Tuesday today, but we do it Thursday as well. We are joined uh, by Tim Ord. Now, if you want to check out more about Tim Ord, I know you guys are familiar with him, but anyone new watching, which I know we got uh, quite a few, you can go over to ord-oracle.com and check out everything that he's about after the uh, the end of this segment. And additionally, if you go over to tfnn.com, you go to the services tab, and we have two uh, phenomenal webinars uh, by Tim Ord. That is the Secret Science of Market Tops, and then Six Secret Ratios, every trader should know. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. So, yeah. well, today's kind of a special day. It's election yeah. day. That happens every four years. So, um, uh, we were actually bullish last week. We actually got along too quick. And uh, I went back and looked at uh, the previous times Trump was a candidate, which is 2016 running against uh, Hillary, then 2020 running against Biden. And uh, the market actually declined and made a bottom uh, before the election was announced, uh, who won the election. And I was kind of watching that pretty carefully, how this market was going to do something probably similar as far as the bottom is concerned. And I noticed the 10-day trend back in 2016-2020 that it did not get to bullish uh, uh, readings. Uh, okay. But the short-term ones did. So the first chart we're going to look at, uh, is actually the arms chart and the, the bottom window is it's yesterday uh, uh, this is actually a little bit of a delay but yesterday three day arms came in at 1.18 anything around 1.2 or higher is bullish 1.18 is close enough uh, next window higher is a two day trend and I got up to uh, 1.2 uh, 1 actually 1.21 1. then right above that is the one day arm and yesterday's arms closed at 1.21. Uh, so actually, the, the one, two, and three day trend did get into bullish territory. The top window is a 10 day trend, and you can see it's nowhere near bullish levels. And that's similar to what happened 2016, 2019. But I did notice the one, two, and three day trend did get in bullish territory. And so we did get panic. Uh, I always said in the past, if there's no panic, there's no bottom. Well, there's different degrees or different time frames of panic. Ideally, you'd like to see the 10-day, which is basically two weeks of trading because five days in a week, 10 days, two weeks. And uh, But for some reason, during elections, that doesn't really get there. So you have to look at other things that, that kind of line up. But, you know, we're bullish. We got long actually too quick. If I didn't get long uh, last week, I definitely would have been long on what's today's Tuesday. I would have been long on Thursday, Thursday, Friday at the latest. Uh, but I already been long the market. Actually, yesterday uh, uh, was actually the, the interday low. The closing low was actually Thursday. But let's go look on and see kind of where we are. On uh, let's go to chart two. Fantastic. And uh, this is kind of the chart that kind of kept me in, got me, um, you know, there's, charting's kind of difficult, you know, not all indicators work all the time. And this is kind of the chart that got me in, because I noticed uh, the bottom is the, just the, the, the five-day average of the advanced decline. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And, but you want to see panic levels, you, you know, uh, when the market gets dumped on, that's usually a good sign. But if the market doesn't really get dumped on and it goes down, it will eventually get dumped on and that'd be the time to act. Yeah. Well, the time to act on, uh, this is more of a shorter term indicator, but when the 10 day, or excuse me, the five day advanced decline gets below 1.65, it's used to get an indication that on a short term basis, the market's at least made a short term low. Doesn't say anything about an intermediate term low, it's just a short term low. And this chart goes back a couple of years, one, two, over, uh, yeah, close to two years, maybe a little longer. And uh, the white, uh, the, the red lines there, uh, they're not dotted, spaded lines, I guess you might say, uh, or uh, uh, vertical, are the times when this indicator got below 0.65. Um, it was, Point, uh, point six three. I forgot what date that was, but it was uh, a week or so ago when that indicator got down to point six three. Yeah, I did get blow close below point six five, and so I was kind of figuring, okay, 
normally when this indicator gets down to below 0.65, the market can go down a little bit lower, but not very much. It's usually at least bounces first before it goes back down again. And pretty much is what expected here. If you look at the chart, uh, the uh, next window up on the five-day average of the advanced decline is the SPY. And if you notice, it comes pretty close, sometimes a little bit early, a day or two or three, but not by much. And so I was kind of getting chomping at the bit. I wasn't really uh, seeing a lot of another different indicator. So I did go along, I think, I don't have the date in front of me, but a little bit, about, we're about a percent off right now or in that vicinity as we got long. But I was kind of looking for the intermittent term because once uh, the election's over, the market usually rallies into year end. So this is yep. more of an intermittent term trade. But this was one of the indicators that kind of got me in a little bit early. I wish I could have waited. If I did wait, I would have got the panic in, the, in that one, two, and three day trend. That would have got me in probably. Again, last week, late last week, if not early this week. Uh, so, you know, this indicator is bullish, is coming off the bottom. So the advanced client is getting stronger, uh, which is all good. So this chart, next chart, chart three, yep. is uh, kind of looks at the nitty gritty of a really the short term. So I was looking at the intermediate term, uh, or not the intermediate term, but uh, I was looking for panic. And once I got uh, panicked, then I kind of narrowed down to volume characteristics. And uh, this chart uh, gets me down to the volume characteristics. It also sh shows the 10 uh, that, that I labeled on the chart, uh, the trend readings and uh, the tick closes over the last several days. And also I put a Bollinger Band on this uh, on uh, this chart is actually the SPY. Um, actually, I think... It, well, we can talk here a little bit, but this chart is going to need not to be interrupted. And we got a—I uh, know we got a. a no, a, certainly. A well, yeah, commercial Tim, come in here. Absolutely, yeah, it's, Tim, stay right there. We'll be right back, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle just after this break. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. I am joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're watching us on YouTube, welcome. Please consider giving this stream a thumbs up. It helps us all out immensely. Tim, before we went to the break, we were looking at, I guess, a more granular uh, view of what's going on in the SPY. All right, okay. Uh, so this is chart number three. I got a Bollinger Band on, on this chart, and it's the SPY daily. And uh, the center line there is actually a 20, uh, the a dotted line between the upper Bollinger Band and lower Bollinger Band be a 20-day average. That's all it is. And the upper band is two standard deviations away from that 20-day moving average. And the lower band is two standard deviations below uh, the norm. So what that means is, in general, if the market gets too stretched away from the norm, it'll come back to the norm. And so I, I got red circles on this chart. And so when this works actually on a <coughs> weekly monthly and daily works okay. pretty good but it gets too far away from that dotted line uh which i got it circled there in other words uh when it gets above the uh, upper bollinger band or close you know uh, closed on it that first one in september uh, but to flip the market sideways uh in october there that high you got 80% above the upper Bollinger Band. That's pretty close uh, to a closing high, if not the closing high right there. And uh, the market uh, cons uh, actually started consolidation. And if you notice, last uh, Thursday, it closed below the Bollinger Band. Okay, that's a reason to look for bullish, just if not uh, to, to be... Just like you hit above the upper Bollinger Band, same thing. If you hit close below the up, lower Bollinger Band, you'll have a snapback. It went too fast in one direction, and you know, the market always wants to go back to norm. If you also notice there, I got a, a shaded pink area there, and there's a gap. So you're at the gap, and you're at the lower Bollinger Band. So that's the bottom. So next day, you want to see what happens. 
And the next day, pops up. Uh, didn't quite close in the middle of the range, but came close. That's that's a big clue that the market's turning around and, and may start to go upside. If you go down to the bottom window, which is a, uh, I always say when the market jumps about thirty percent compared to the previous days before it, that's usually where a selling climax occurs. And if you notice, I'm just eyeballing it. It looks like more like probably 25%, but 30% or more is ideal. And normally when the market surges that much, it stops. And because there's too many people trying to get out the door at the same time. Right. But usually when the market stops, so that I, call, I call it a selling climax close enough to one this. Uh, technical analysis is not exact science. There's different shades of gray. But I always say a 30% jump in volume will stop the market either going up or down. In this case, it, it stopped it going down. So anyhow, you have a selling climax. You went into the gap area. Uh, the market closed below the lower Bollinger Band. So, and if you notice, I got... 1.5 trend on that day. That's leans bullish. Ideally, you like to see 1.2. Well, the next day, I do have a 1.2, uh, which uh, also some uh, down tick readings there, 240. So that's almost meets my parameter. I like to three, uh, see 300 down tick readings or more with a trend close of 1.2 or higher. And I call that a bullish combination. Well, yesterday we had just that. We had a, a trend close of 1.22, and we had 328 down tick readings. So that's a buy signal. So what's, what's supposed to happen today is a rally, and so so far we're getting a rally. But that's how uh, I, I did go long the other week, but I hadn't been long before that. I would have definitely been long in, in this configuration I just pointed out to you. So there's a lot of uh, bullish stuff. We, do, we got panic on our short-term uh, space as well. Not on a long, uh, as a ten day, but we got the one uh, three day trend. So whole thing's bullish. I think this is probably uh, a bottom that will last probably into going into year end. You know, you'll maybe have some minor consolidations, but I think this is a significant low that's going to have, uh, uh, I guess, some power to it or not power. I'll have uh, time. Uh, It'll last a while, I'll put it that way. So right. I think, in general, uh, this is bullish all the way to year end. So also, seasonality is, is actually bullish in this time frame here, too. So market's going to, in my opinion, break new highs here. Uh, how much higher? You know, at least 5%, you know, maybe 10%. We'll see how it goes. Um, so anyhow, run a buy signal a little bit too quick, but there's a lot of evidence that we formed a low. Probably yesterday was a closing low. Um, and uh, the, we're actually the closing low was last Thursday. The interday low was to, uh, yesterday. So, yeah, you know, that's my take on that. Fantastic! So it's been really gold market. Or, or we have more questions on this or anything? No, I think we're good. I don't see any questions in the den uh, or the chat. So we can move over to gold. Let's take a look at that. All right, this is kind of going to be pretty simple because the. the the monthly time frames rule the weekly time frames. The weekly time frames rule the daily time frames. So the charts you really start to should look at is the monthly charts. Make sure you're on the right side of the market. Right. If the monthlies are on a sell signal, eventually you're going to get uh, caught in the market because the monthlies outweigh the weeklies, outweigh the dailies. So if you're trading, you want to trade with the trend. And right now the trend's up. This is a monthly chart. It's kind of we've seen this chart before. It's nothing really much to add to it. It looks at the bigger trend, but it takes in the up down volume and advanced decline, which is basically what the market is is volume and it's up volume and down volume and it's and it all depends on advance and decline. So when both those indicators are bullish, in other words, up volume is outperforming down volume and advancing issues outperforming declining issues, that's a bull run. And that's what these two indicators do. The okay. bottom window is the uh, GDX monthly, GDX up down volume. Uh, yeah, it's up down volume. And next higher window is GDX advanced decline. And that's a cumulative up down volume, a cumulative advanced decline. The top one is GDX. And I gave bicycle back in, I think it was March or April of this year. The bicycle comes when both indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band. And both did. 
and both are, are trending higher. What that means is advancing issues are outperforming declining issues on a monthly time frame, and the up volume is outperforming the down volume on a monthly time frame. And market trends, uh, they don't just chop around. Uh, these trends last a while. Uh, if you go back and look, you know, between those red and blue lines, there's a year and a half. Uh, minimum. So the, the bicycle in March will last, in my opinion, at least another year uh, into late next year at a minimum. So you'll have some minor consolidations, but not any major consolidations. Right. If you look at the weeklies, which is the next one, kind of a similar, similar situation. So weeklies are clearly on a, a bicycle here. Uh, same method, Bollinger Band, you close above it, it's bullish. And this, uh, the weeklies gave a buy in, in March of this year. So Tim, don't see any trouble. Tim, stay right there. I um, want to keep you over, and I know we got a short segment, but I want to hear what you have to talk about with uh, some of the other chart as well. All right. Folks, stay okay. right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Or. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, we got a short segment here, but I want to go over this last chart with Tim. This is the uh, weekly GDX we're looking at right now. Uh, so this is a weekly. Uh, actually, on a, on a daily, I do got a, some minor divergences. But uh, okay. what's going to happen here going forward, probably over the next year, maybe three years, there's going to be a rotation in the market. They, you know, again, the, the monthlies um, rule the weeklies, weekly rule the dailies, dailies rule the hours, the hours you know, rule the minutes and whatever. But uh, I'm pretty much going to stay long because there's a lot of uh, monthly charts that are actually on these real small issues on uh, on the gold issues, I guess you might say. It's probably going to be a speculative bubble yeah. going to happen. Not, not any, probably not within the next year, but when these markets uh, start off slow like this and they're persistent, normally there's a bubble at the end, and that'll be your cue. When you're making too much money too fast, <laughs> that's going to be a warning sign that the market's kind of is going to an end. Right. And so I'm kind of just staying long here because, again, a lot of these smaller issues are flipping to bicycles on the monthly chart, similar to what I have on GDX here, the okay. uptown volume advanced client indicators. I just do a a Bollinger Band on the monthly time frames on these small issues. And if you see the volume coming in uh, where the market kind of went dead on these small issues and the volume starting to come in and that mid Bollinger Band starting to turn up and they close above the mid Bollinger Band, that's a early warning sign that a major rally is starting on these small issues. And I think that's what's probably going to, well, actually, it is happening right now. And so even though there be some corrections in the GDX market, there's no significant top, uh, at least for the next year, maybe a couple, three years. Fantastic. Tim, so. thank you so much for joining us. We're going to see you Thursday, all right? Yeah, see you then. Thank you. Fantastic.